how many heads of income we have in income tax. So first we begin with income from salaries. Then we go to house property. After house property, we have profit and gains from business and profession. Then comes your capital gains. And the last residual head of income is called other sources. So these are the uh, five heads of incomes. And now we are discussing capital gains. So first thing you have to understand what is the definition of capital gain because the basic essence of any law subject is totally dependent on the definitions, right? So this, therefore it is important to define things. Otherwise it will lead to uh, various kind of legal issues. So section 45 defines what do you mean by capital? And it says capital gain, it's a very simple definition. Capital gains is nothing but any profit arising on account of two important words here, which needs to be completely scrutinized. One is transfer and the other one is capital asset. Any profit arising on account of transfer of a capital asset. So the entire chapter, which we will be discussing starting from today, revolves around these two things. One is the word transfer and the other one is the word capital asset. If you understand these two terminologies, then I think it is as good as understanding the entire chapter. So if you understand these two words, transfer and capital asset, I think that would be more than sufficient for you to answer almost 50% of the questions from this particular chapter. So I'm forget about this definition. Let us keep this aside. I'll uh, give you three transactions, right? So focus on these three transactions. First transaction is that your grandfather, your grandfather has gifted, or let's not use the word gifted, you have inherited, you have inherited, you have inherited a property, right? So, the inheritance is simple, the property, original owner was your grandfather. So from your grandfather, it has come to your father. And from your father, your father has transferred the property or given the property or gifted the property or you have inherited the property. Right? So this is a land. The property here is land. Inherited. And the value of this land right now in the market is 10 crores. So that means this land, which was originally purchased by your father, so your father got it. Now your father will definitely give it to you. You will inherit this from your dad. And the value of this land is 10 crores. So should you pay capital gain tax or not? Does it result in capital gain? Or is this not a capital gain? So that's the question that you have to answer. Second, second point, you are aware that uh, Sachin got, who gifted the Ferrari to Sachin? Right, Sachin got the uh, Ferrari from whom? It was given by Michael Schumacher as a gift to Sachin Tendulkar. And what is the uh, value of Ferrari car uh, in the year in which was acquired? Definitely, uh, will it be in lakhs or will it be in crores? 
So since it was given by Michael Schumacher, by the time it gets uh, to Sachin Tendulkar, obviously Sachin Tendulkar has to pay customs duty and all that. So let's assume the value of Ferrari is one crore. Should Sachin Tendulkar pay capital gain tax or not? So that's the uh, second question. Third question. Let's say this, this is for girls. It can be for boys also. Uh, let's say your uh, grandmother, your granny, right? Your grandmother, uh, she has given jewels, valuable jewels, right? To your mother. And uh, finally, your mother has given it to you. And what you have done is after 10 years, you have sold this. Since the gold value is increasing on a daily basis, you have sold this. You have sold this for a whopping five crore rupees. So should you pay capital gain tax for this? So all you have to tell me in this three transaction, whether these three transaction gives rise to capital gain or not. So in order to answer this question, you know what is important? It is very important to understand these two words. The first thing is that you have to understand whether the property involved in case number one, case number two and case number three, whether the property involved is a capital asset or not. And second question, whether this three transaction results in transfer of the property or not. So that's the reason I said to you, if the moment you understand what is a capital asset and the moment you understand what is a transfer, by default, you will be able to answer any question on capital gain. So that's the reason it is very important to scrutinize or to properly understand Two things. One, what is a capital gain and what do you mean by capital asset? So we'll go one by one. First, let us critically evaluate what do you mean by a capital asset? If you understand the definition properly, I think uh, things will become very easier for you. So let's go by the definition, which is given in section two subsection 14 defines what is a capital asset. We have done this in the class, if you could remember. So this is just a recap for you guys. So what is a capital asset? The answer is any property. The definition says capital asset can be any movable or immovable property, tangible or intangible property, fixed or floating property, whether it is used in business or not, whether it is used in business or not, but it can't be four items. So the bottom line is that capital asset can't be a uh, capital asset can be any property, but it excludes four items. So you should remember those four items, which cannot be considered as capital assets. The rest is definitely considered as capital asset. So what are the four items that cannot be considered as capital asset? Item number one, stock in trade. Stock in trade is nothing but goods held in business for the purpose of trading, also known as inventory in business language. So stock in trade cannot be a capitalist. For example, if you are doing business of laptops and computers, every time when you buy and sell your goods, laptop or computer in this case, that will be considered as income from business. If the word stock in trade is also a capital asset, then what will happen? The word 
business income will disappear from income tax because every time you buy and sell stock it will results in it will result in capital so therefore stock in trade cannot be considered as a capital asset and stock in trade when you buy and sell it is tax it is considered as income from business so this is the first item which can't be considered as capital asset second item which cannot be considered as capital asset this is very important and very tricky also this is called uh, personal belongings so personal belongings also cannot be considered as capital asset right so it's very important for you people to know what what is the I mean, the complete list of personal belonging that uh, cannot be computed as capital asset okay so personal belongings there are four exceptions that means there are four personal belongings which are still considered as capital asset so which are those four personal belongings even though they are personal belongings they are still considered as capital asset you guys have to remember these four so in this first in this list is house property so house property even though it's your personal house it's your personal land it's your personal belonging still when you buy and sell house property you are taxable under the head capital gain you are taxed under the head capital gain because income tax department is saying that house property even though it is your personal belonging but still it is capital asset the second item in this list is called archaeological collection archaeological collection now what is this archaeological collection it includes basically your antiques third work of art fourth jewelry jewelry also we considered as precious metals and stones right so these four items are considered as capital assets okay third personal uh, third item which is not considered as capital asset includes rural agriculture land and fourth item and the last one is certain notified bonds issued by the government of so these are the uh, four items which cannot be considered as capital asset excluding these four items the rest are considered as capital asset right so you guys have to remember what do you mean by capital asset right so i hope by now you have a proper understanding as to what can be a capital asset and what can't be a capital asset right so the bottom line is capital asset is can be any movable immovable fixed floating tangible intangible property whether it is used for business or not but it cannot be the following stock in trade personal belongings with four exceptions rural agriculture land and notified bonds so we have understood the first part of the definition that talks about capital asset and transfer right so transfer is used first and then capital asset but anyways we have discussed capital asset first so i'll give you a list of items now i'll be sharing with you guys a list of items and you have to tell whether it is a capital asset or not okay so let me uh, share the uh, file with you guys you can give your answer in the chat chat box give your answers what is a capital asset and what is not a capital asset 
all you have to say whether it is a capital asset or not. First item, air conditioner at home. Please type in your answer. You will get similar kind of questions in the examination also. These are mostly application based questions. Yeah, uh, I think somebody is scribbling my screen. Don't do that. Don't behave like nursery kids. Okay. Okay. So by and large, everybody are saying it's a capital asset. Yes, yes, yes. The answer is uh, yes. Let's. So just quickly uh, recall, what is the meaning of capital asset? Let me share that black screen with you again, the blackboard. Capital asset can't be, can be anything, but it can't be four things. When you put AC at your home, right? What is that? Is it a personal belonging or not? When you have installed AC at your home, is AC a personal belonging or not? The answer is yes, AC is a personal belonging. So therefore, air conditioner at home can't be a capital asset, right? Because AC is a personal belonging, right? So I hope you guys are clear. So air conditioner at home is not a capital asset, right? So let's have some more transactions. Next item, dog. Dog, dog, any dog, street dog, whichever breed you like, your own dog at home. Is it a capital asset or is it not a capital asset? Third, BMW car. You have BMW car at your home. Is this a capital asset, BMW car? Right? So both pug dog, this is uh, not a capital asset, right? A dog, not a capital asset, because all these are personal belongings, not a capital asset. What about residence, your own house? Is your house a capital asset or not? What is your answer? Let's see, house. Uh, you're right. If you could recall this, this screen, what did I tell you? What are the exceptions? Right? First exception is house property itself. So house property can't be a capital asset, right? So house property can be a capital asset because it's an exception, right? So you guys are correct. So let's continue. Let's have some more examples. So this is a capital asset. Okay, some more examples. What about jewelry? Likewise, house let out on hire. So is this a capital asset? The answer is even though it is personal belonging, but it is an exception. So therefore it is a capital asset. His house let down as a higher capital asset does not matter whether it is let down higher or you are only staying in that as far as it is house property, it is a capital asset. So don't break your head whether it is let out or self out. Silver utensils. Silver utensils. What do you think? There are some people who use silver utensils. Uh, of course, in the uh, olden era, Lot of people used to use silver utensils as a uh, uh, right for consumption of food also uh, so silver is is silver utensil a capital asset some of us use uh, silver utensils for doing prayers right they are used as puja thali or puja bell puja cups so it's quite common in indian uh, households silver utensils uh, so what what happens here in, in case of silver utensils there is a controversy right so there is a there is an issue because this 
one guy he had lot of silver utensils at home which he sold which he sold and uh, income tax officer was the was of the opinion that silver is a precious metal right so we had discussed that all precious metals will be a capital asset so income tax officer also said the same thing see silver utensil silver is a precious metal since you have sold it so yeah therefore you have to pay capital gain tax so this guy went to court and he argued that see silver utensils are used for personal consumption then how can it be considered as capital asset so what court said court said okay please consider silver utensils as non capital asset in case if it is well silver jewelry it's okay but at least silver utensils please give an exemption please give some relief to the general public so hence forth after the verdict of the court utensils were no longer considered as a capital asset by looking looking at this one more guy also went to court because this guy had gold utensils at home this guy uh, i don't know i saw a picture in which the entire family of mutut finance were having food in gold utensils right so there's one guy who had gold utensils and he also went to court saying that i sold gold utensils so please exempt me from capital gains as previously you had exempted silver utensils but court said in this case no this will be considered as a capital asset so we can't give you exemption so this will be considered as a capital asset so that was the uh, controversy that happened but now we have clarity all precious metals are capital assets the only exception is silver utensils if it is a silver jewelry also it's a capital asset so the only exception since the court has said not to consider this as a capital asset we are not considering this as a capital asset otherwise we would have considered this also as a capital asset okay so silver yes silver utensils is used in home in personal use very good so you are right your analysis is right meghna gb your answer is correct but that's the reason one more guy said okay i'm using gold utensils so this also i'm using it for personal use but the code had to say no right so next transaction uh, let's see what do we have next next is uh, shares used as stock in trade shares not used as stock in trade so shares used as stock in trade will not be a capital asset because the first item in the list of non capital assets is stock in trade but if shares are not used as uh, stock in trade then it becomes a capital asset now what do you mean by these two terminology is very simple if i am a stock broker what do stock brokers do they do trade and what do they trade in they trade in shares they buy shares they keep it in bulk and depending on the rates they try to leverage either they sell or they buy or they hold but i am a salaried employee i also buy and sell shares i do i do also invest in share market but for me my job is not buying or and selling shares in terms of what a businessman does right broker is a businessman he is a business guy his job itself is trading so for him that is his income from business but for me it is not my business income i am a salaried employee i am not doing the business of share broking so for me a guy like me who is a salaried employee if i buy and sell shares it will be taxable under the head capital gain right so for me shares are considered as capital assets but for a broker since his business itself is buying and selling it will not be considered as a capital asset so what about rural agriculture and rural agriculture land is also not a capital asset not a capital asset right then urban agriculture land urban agriculture land is a capital asset and uh, fine this is the answer so this not a capital asset not a capital asset capital asset capital asset not a capital asset not a capital asset right so the answers are displayed so have you guys understood the definition of capital asset in today's class if you have understood the definition of capital asset i think that would be Uh, last more than uh, the next definition is of uh, what do you mean by the word capital transfer asset. what do you understand by the term transfer right so let's discuss what transfer means this is a activity which we'll do once we are once we discuss the word transfer so transfer does not have a definition as such but there are as you can see here 
वन टू थ्री फोर फाइव सिक्स दिस सिक्स ट्रांजेक्शन आर कंसिडर्ड एज ट्रांसफर so there is no definition for the word transfer but it says the word transfer includes these six items so first the word transfer includes sale then it includes exchange then relinquishment compulsory acquisition extinguishment and con conversion right so these are the uh, four uh, things which are part of your transfer so let us begin with sale sale is something which i need not get into detail right so sale is nothing but the act of selling selling a product or a service right so it is a kind of a trade and this trade involves money what is exchange exchange is also a kind of trade but the word exchange may not involve money right so exchange may not involve money exchange can be between two assets right uh, it can be a barter trade you give something and take something else right so the modern form of barter trade is also called as counter trade right in modern international business we don't use the word barter trade but we rather use the word counter trade so sense is that in case of sale there is a trade but it is being done for money but in case of exchange money is not involved but here two different assets are involved and income tax department says when you do exchange only if two capital assets are involved it can be considered as exchange for the purpose of defining the word transfer if the two things what is being exchanged one is capital asset one is not a capital asset in that case we cannot say that the transfer has taken place right just give me a minute okay so let me give you an example for uh, exchange let us say uh, on the one hand i am giving you gold and i am saying you please take this gold and give me land okay so this is the deal the value of gold and land of course the buyer and seller has to determine it after we conclude the transaction only we'll come to know who is under profit whether the guy who has sold the gold or whether the guy who has bought the land so that discussion will happen later whether who got benefited the person who sold it or the person who bought it right who has made the profit whoever has made the profit should pay capital gain but that's not the question the question is will this result in transfer or not what what form of transaction is this this is exchange can we call this as sale no because there is no money involved here since money is not involved we would rather use the word transfer so is this transfer uh, legitimate as per income tax act can this be considered as a transfer the answer is yes the reason why this is considered as a transfer because both are capital assets gold is also a capital asset this is also a capital asset so this is a form of exchange so income tax department approves such transaction and consider this as a transfer but what if it what if one is a capital asset the other one is not now i am saying take my 10 bmw cars take my 10 bmw cars which i have been using for the last 3 4 years and in return after taking this 10 bmw cars in return you give me a piece of land 
in that case in this case bmw cars cannot be considered as capital asset whereas land is a capital asset so here transfer will not take place right so in order to consider a transaction as a transfer in case of exchange both the assets which are traded should be capital asset if one is capital the other one is not then that will not result in transfer if it is not resulting in transfer then capital gain will not take place if capital gain is not taking place then you don't have to pay capital gain tax it will be taxable under the head other sources right but if it is if both are capital assets then it will be considered as capital gain and you should end up paying capital gain tax the capital gain tax varies right uh, for different kind of transactions for short term the rate is different for long term capital gain the rate is different so we will discuss the rates little later for now all you have to understand is what do you mean by transfer according to income tax act the word transfer includes these things first sale the second one is exchange the third one is uh, uh, relinquishment so we'll uh, discuss what do you mean by relinquishment relinquishment is a kind of a transaction in which the property which is being abandoned or surrender is being sold right so the property which is being abandoned or surrender being sold and somebody is selling these two things and making profit out of it right so all the uh, vehicles which are seized by bangalore traffic police and nobody is uh, taking the ownership right there are many vehicles for which especially accident vehicles people if there is a serious accident people leave the vehicle and run away and uh, even though you may have registration number of the vehicle but sometimes the owner will not be there right address would have changed right so various things happen in india you know so in such case what police will do finally police will auction the vehicles right police will call for an auction give an advertisement in the newspaper police will auction all this vehicle and all that lakhs and crores of money which is being realized from the sale of uh, abandoned property goes to police department so can police department say that see we are not the owners right see in this who is selling one person who is the owner is selling to another person so after the transaction takes place the party who buys becomes the owner right similarly here in case of gold also two owners are selling one guy who owns the gold the other guy who owns the land both are owners they are selling so this makes sense because the uh, ownership of the capital asset is with the ssc but here the ownership of the capital asset is not with the ssc police department does not owns all this abandoned cars right so can the police department say since we are not the owners so how can you charge capital gain tax on us the answer is no because income tax department is very smart so they have included the word relinquishment also under the definition of transfer right so transfer surrender sometimes you know uh, voluntarily people surrender their wealth uh, especially government has lot of schemes if you are into illegal business if you voluntarily surrender or if you help somebody catching catching a thief right so all sort of schemes government has so in case if somebody is surrendering his illegal business all that uh, property which he has which is illegal if it is being surrendered then the government will auction that property and the money will go to the particular department of the government so in in these two cases such transactions are called relinquishment and relinquishment is also a form of transfer and if transfer takes place you know you have to pay capital gain tax compulsory acquisition uh, the word is self explanatory who is doing compulsory acquisition the answer is government government is doing compulsory acquisition and compulsory acquisition has become a very uh, popular transaction these days because for infrastructure development for expansion of uh, infrastructure government wants land right bangalore metro rail corporation itself has acquired so much of land for uh, its various uh, projects so in such case what happens you have no option even though you don't want to sell but the government is forcefully acquiring your land so in that case you cannot say okay i didn't sell but the government acquired it forcefully so please exempt me from the capital gain so during compulsory acquisition also you may have to pay capital gain tax even though you will not willing to sell but still you have the property is acquired by the government and you would have made crores of rupees of profit right so whenever compulsory acquisition happens government will give you sometimes double or triple the market rate because government wants the property at any cost 
So in such scenario, you get to make huge amount of profit. So that profit which you make through compulsory acquisition is also considered as capital gain and compulsory acquisition, the word compulsory acquisition is considered as transfer, right? Finally, uh, we have extinguishment. Uh, extinguishment is when you lose the right over the asset because you have not fulfilled a particular obligation. For example, if you have taken home loan, what happens if you don't pay installments? So if you miss a couple of installments, the bank will send notice and then if you don't reply, the bank will take over your property. In that case, what will happen? You will lose your property also and you have to forego all the installments which have already paid. So when you lose the rights over your property and when you lose the uh, privileges, then such transaction is called extinguishment. So when banks take over all the properties, let us say a bank has given 10 home loans out of which five of them have not paid. So obviously the bank will take over their homes. And when banks, they don't, you, I mean, banks, what will banks do with the houses? Obviously they will uh, consult real estate brokers and they'll sell it off to recover their loan money. But in the process of recovering that loan, uh, 